When I look back at my career in the Air Force, there are so many things that I'm so proud of. I had an airman ask me once, what's the coolest thing about being a commander? I told him being a commander wasn't really the cool thing, but helping people with that position was really awesome. I'm Chris Ford. I'm born and raised in Buffalo, New York, and I run the National Association of Veteran Serving Organizations. I was raised by my mother who raised three boys. I was lucky enough to do pretty well in school and I had some mentors that served in the Army Reserve and it prompted me to think about going into military service myself. And I had the opportunity to go to the Air Force Academy, which was amazing. And while I was there as a senior, I had the opportunity to lead the survival school. And I found that leading people was really amazing to be around people that I can help. When I started out in the Air Force, my very first job was to run the mobility section. So I had to very quickly figure out how to get smart about the work that they do and how do I build credibility with my subordinates. And a lot of that was just spending a lot of time reading and listening and learning alongside them so that I could quickly learn the skills that they had so that I could be a more effective leader. The tipping point or the pivotal point in my career was getting my first opportunity to command. And for me, that came in 2007 with the opportunity to serve as a security forces commander in Little Rock, Arkansas. And unfortunately, a month before I take command, the unit suffers a casualty in Iraq and loses Staff Sergeant John Self. I had the opportunity to walk alongside John's family and help them memorialize him and honor his legacy. That single event changed the whole dynamic of the rest of my career. My first sergeant at Little Rock Air Force Base was Master Sergeant Tracy Sisko. Unfortunately, a year after my command, Tracy's now the person who's killed, and we have to go through this whole healing process again. Losing Tracy was hard, and it was hard as a commander to stay focused on the mission and the men and women who are also affected and put my personal um, concerns aside. After my command at Little Rock, I was selected to command a second time, which was a tremendous honor. And I was adamant that if I was going to do that a second time, I wanted to go to the 732nd Security Forces Squadron in Iraq. Ironically, it's the same unit Staff Sergeant John Self was deployed to when he was killed. And it was boots on the ground in Iraq, doing police transition teams, military working dog support, and law and order units. And in September of 2009, we lost Lieutenant Joseph Helton to an IED attack. And again, a challenging opportunity as a commander to try and keep the unit focused on the mission and try and figure out how do we help the family. But I felt it was important to make an effort to help them understand what had happened to him. I went back to Iraq and finished my tour by the end of 2010 and returned again to the Pentagon for a second tour, but this time at the Joint Staff. And during that time, I was asked by my commanding officer, what I wanted to do next. I told her that I had heard of this office called Warrior and Family Support, and it seemed like they help veterans and military families with challenges. And I told her a little bit about my story with three families that had lost their sons and how that was really weighing heavy on my heart and saw it as an opportunity to align my passion with my vocation. 60 days later, I started in the Warrior and Family Support Office. In my career as a security professional, I told people no for a living. But now in this opportunity in Warrior and Family Support, I got to help people find yes. And that felt so much better. One of the first things I tried to look for was a trade association that brought together all of the disparate pieces of effort going on around the country. Again, 42,000 nonprofit organizations, all trying to help veterans. And to my amazement, I didn't find one. So within the first six months of my time there, I crafted out a terrible business plan at what a national association might look like. And I shelved it for a good period of time, thinking that it wasn't achievable. NAVSO went public in February of 2015. So NAVSO, as we call it for short, provides essential resources to organizations that serve veterans and military families so that they can be more effective and efficient in the work that they do. Being a leader in the Air Force or in any environment for me has always been about being inclusive and bringing a team together to work really hard problems and find our way through those solutions as a team. I don't always have all the answers, but I usually know someone who might. And pulling each of those pieces into that solution so that we're all together winning has really been the highlight of my career. <laughs>